so welcome everyone uh, thank you for uh, joining our session today on homology modeling using uh, biovia discovery studio i am mehul i take care of uh, i am basically marketing manager in vias 3d i handle the marketing activities and uh, today i have with me uh, our Venkateshan, uh, who is uh, uh, basically BioVia specialist uh, uh, in Vias 3D. And uh, before I hand it over to uh, Aarti, I would just like to mention that we want to keep this uh, session as interactive as possible. So we will be launching a few poll questions uh, in between the webinar and we uh, request you to please uh, uh, respond to those questions. These will be multi-choice questions, so you can just select the right uh, response to the question whenever the poll appears on your screen. After the session, we will have the question answer round. So in between, if you have any questions, feel free to type them out in the questions box and uh, Aarti can answer those uh, in like after the session. Uh, so before we begin, I would like to introduce uh, today's uh, uh, speaker. Aarti has uh, uh, received her MSc degree from uh, uh, VIT in 2015. She earned her PhD in computational biology from the same university in 2019. Aarti has more than three years of industrial and academic experience in bioinformatics domain, specially related to uh, chemi informatics, proteomics, and genomics area. During her PhD, she has succeeded in developing CAD protocols for non structural proteins. She also worked in developing pipelines for human gut uh, microbiome, whole genome sequencing, and whole exome sequencing. She has published around 10 research articles in international journals and have received awards from Ichrula, RABT, etc. So, with this, I would like to hand it over to uh, Aarti. Uh, welcome, Aarti. Over to you. Thank you, Megul, for the fine introduction. So, uh, hi. Uh, today, I will be talking about homology modeling using BioVia Discovery Studio. So, before I start, I will start with the agenda. So, today, we will be discussing protein structure prediction method as well as steps involved in structure deposition. So, say for example, if you have X ray crystallography structure, how to deposit those structure in RCSB protein data bank? And apart from that, uh, what is homology modeling and what are all the steps involved in homology modeling and how we can implement using BioVia Discovery Studio and uh, validation. Uh, and before we start with the presentation, I'll just give a small introduction about us. So we, Vyas 3D, uh, I mean, uh, we are uh, located in, uh, our head office is located in Houston, Texas, and we have five branches, so uh, in India, Mexico, as well as Canada and uh, Turkey. And we have around 150 professionals with uh, 18 PhDs and MTEx so with this uh, expertise in design and manufacturing, structure and solid mechanics, etc. And also we are a global uh, platinum partner with the Dassault system and we provide engineering consulting as well as technical resource for uh, engineering as well as uh, life sciences. So coming to the introduction to protein structure determination. So protein structure determination, how we can determine the protein structure. Say for example, you might have seen many protein structures in RCSB data bank or uh, uh, we can pr predict using X-ray or NMR crystallography structure, right? So how we can determine it? So there are a series of steps involved in protein uh, structure determination. So either uh, if, it is, if you are taking X-ray or if you are taking uh, NMR crystallography, it will have certain steps. Say for example, if it is an X-ray crystallography, it will be pur uh, purifying the protein structure and will be crystallizing the structure and after crystallizing we'll be collecting the data and then it will go for phasing and after the structure determination either it can be go for a model building and refinement uh, you will be purifying your protein once you have purified your protein the crystallization process occurs so in case if there is any problem with the crystallization so you have to go back the purification step and you have to uh, change the process and then you have to come with crystallization and apart from that you can go for 
X-ray diffraction method after crystallization. If there is any phase problem or any changes in the diffraction pattern, you have to go for uh, you have to go from the starting. I mean, uh, it's from the purified protein step. And apart from that, you do have electron density. Uh, uh, I mean, density thing. And apart from that, then you will be predicting your 3D structure. This is how experimentational protein structure determination will work. So, what are the advantages and disadvantages associated with X-ray as well as NMR crystallography structure? So, the major advantages associated with X-ray crystallography structure is you can grow the crystals of the protein, and it has a high-resolution microscopy is needed, and also the atomic model calculation and refinement is necessary, and even the electron density maps or maps will be produced. And apart from that, you can determine the protein function, and you can you will be getting your RM. That is your root mean square deviation. So in case if there is a protein, uh, if there is any deviation in the protein, and those things also could be monitored. And coming to the disadvantages, uh, it can take weeks to years. So uh, say for example, as I have mentioned, if there is any process uh, problem in the crystallization or phase problem, you have to redo it from the starting. So and also it's time consuming and expensive, and there is size, some size limitation. You can't go for a high uh, high resolution images, and also the resolution will be varied. So coming to how we can deposit the protein structure in RCSB PDB. Say for example, uh, you have predicted your structure using X-ray or NMR crystallography structure, and once you have uh, predicted your structure, you would like to deposit your structure in RCSB PDB data bank. How do you do it? Uh, so for that, there are series of steps which is involved in uh, predicting the depositing the protein structure in RCSB PDB data bank and say for example if you have your sequence you have to check the sequence using blast p blast p is nothing but the blast protein and blast n blast n is a blast nucleotide okay, so you uh, you have to go to uniprot or ncba and you have to check the sequences whether the sequences uh, already existing sequences available or already the structure has been determined or not in case if the structure is not determined uh, you have you are in a right path and also you can check the ligands say for example in case if you are adding some crystal uh, i mean uh, in case if you are adding some crystallography uh, i mean uh, ligand structure you would like to check whether the ligand is already existing or not in case if it is not available then you have to go for ligand expo or chemical component dictionary is present in the check the ligand part and apart from that you have to prepare your data for the dep deposition using pdb extract as well as sf tool and uh, these tools are also available inside the rcsp pdb data bank itself and once you extract your uh, i mean uh, data with the pdb extract as well as pdb extract work then you can go for go, uh, go and validate your structure whether the already existing structure is available or not or, or what is the major difference over your structures and those things could be applicable in validating the structure for that there is some validation server which is also available into the rcsp uh, data bank itself and apart from that once you have validated your structure then you are ready to deposit your protein structure with using Adit or Adit NMR. So Adit NMR is used for NMR structure. Adit is used for X-ray crystallography structure. So and also uh, these are the tools which can be used for Adit and uh, Adit NMR uh, deposition of the structure. So. Uh, uh, so we know very well how we can determine the protein structure either we will go for some experimentational method and apart from experimentational method we will ha also have computational method so there are n number of uh, computational methods are available uh, for uh, predicting the protein structure so we are taking uh, i mean in case if the protein structure is we doesn't have any homologous structure then we'll go for ab initio or if it is 40 percent structure uh, stability is available then we'll go for threading structure threading Based method and apart from that we do have homology modeling so today we will be talking about homology modeling and coming to homology modeling so why do we need to go for homology modeling what is homologous uh, sequences why uh, uh, 
why there is a specific protocol is available so we'll have this question so in case if the sequence or all i mean uh, if the structure is already available in the existing data banks or in existing uh, sequences available then it is easy it is very easy for us to make a protein structure so um, to identify the three-dimensional fold of your protein and also you can understand the properties of the residues with the help of a pk and solvent accessibility and also to understand the spatial orientation and also the interaction of active sites uh, residues and uh, the homology modeling will help help to explain the effect on activity from mutagenesis studies and also it is used to design ligands to bind to the protein structure so coming to homology modeling so say for example i'm taking a sequence and i want to see uh, whether the homology sequence or uh, structure is available then what i'll do i'll blast it so after blasting i'll be getting the protein data uh, from rcsb and then we'll be modeling our own protein that's how homology modeling works and how it works say for example it will check for the conserved region of the protein structure you have your own uh, template and uh, you would like to check your this is your query sequence and you will be checking with your template sequence the query sequence will be available uh, i mean uh, the data that you have sequenced or uh, that you have done for it, that you have, uh, want to predict for your protein structure. But this template structure, this is already existing structure in any of the data bank. And if it is like the existing structure is available, then what you will do, you will be checking for the conserved region of two proteins. So once you have checked your uh, uh, conserved region of two proteins, you will be looking for whether it is similar or dissimilar. And based on the similarity, it will predict your protein structure and uh, homology modeling we can call it as a comparative modeling so the reason why we will call it as a comparative modeling it can predict the protein structure based on the template and also it analyzes the protein function and interaction and also the antigenetic uh, behavior of your protein structure and uh, we can call it as a rational design of proteins with increased stability as well as novel function and for homologous mo homology modeling we recommend where 30 percent of the sequence identity and uh, evolutionary basis based on the evolutionary thing uh, the structure is more stable and also the changes occurred at slower rate when it compared to its sequences and it will also check for distantly related sequence that can fold into the similar structure and there are 40 40 percent homology or similarity are guaranteed to adapt a similar structure say for example i have my own sequence query sequence i have found template sequence will my model will be reliable to the same uh, template of course you will get uh, more than 40 to 60 percent of your template uh, structure and you will get uh, in uh, most of the possible cases you will get 100 percent structure also but you know the, there are few residues will be missing so that's why you will be preferring homology modeling rather than go for ab initio or threading model but in case if the structure is not available if the sequence is not at all found uh, in any of the databases we don't have any other option we have to go for ab initio modeling method and uh, what happens in uh, homology modeling so say for example if you have your zero percentage to 30 percent of your protein you can how it how you can identify your own template so it is based on your function or the protein fold and also you can find the binding or active sites by using 3d motive searching and also the success may require additional information and if it is like more than 30 to 60 percentage you can identify the property that don't occur in the template example it can be electrostatistics or cavity volume etc and it could be used for protein engineering that is also your stability and it may help guide the site directed mutagenesis studies and also if it is uh, more than 60 to 100 percent of your template is available then you'll be getting the comparable medium resolution for protein from the x-ray or uh, nmr crystal structure and it also may be useful for structure based uh, drug design uh, i mean in computational method we can classify the uh, drug design method into structure based drug design as well as ligand based drug design in, in case of structure based drug design and uh, uh, it will be very useful and also it can be applicable for docking studies and apart from that it may help understand substrate or ligand specificity so that is the major uh, limitation which is associated uh, uh, from sequence identity key to homology modeling and uh, 
thanks uh, thanks arti so i think uh, this is the time to launch our uh, first poll question so like i uh, uh, announced in the beginning we'll be uh, launching a poll question on your screen uh, once you see uh, the question uh, i think you can see it on your screen now you can select uh, the right uh, option applicable to you question is are you using biovia suite in your um, product development process if it is yes you can select yes if no you can select uh, no so we'll just keep the poll live for uh, 30 to 40 seconds and uh, then we'll start with the presentation again i request everyone to select the right response are you using uh, biovia suite in your product development process so we'll just keep this open for a few more seconds before we start back with our uh, presentation okay so yeah over to you arti you can continue with the presentation thank you thank you Michael. yeah so what are all the steps involved in homology modeling so we understood the, what is protein structure determination and how we can go for homology modeling and all. so we should know how uh, what are all the steps associated with homology modeling so coming to the steps involved in homology modeling, what happens? Uh, the first step involved in homology modeling is you will be checking your sequence. So say for example, you have your uh, query sequence and you have your template sequence. You will be checking with your query sequence whether the template is available or not. Uh, say for example, this one is your uh, query sequence and you will be checking for your template. Uh, so how you will how you will uh, check the templates? So based uh, with the help of blast P or blast M. So if it is a protein structure, then you can go for blast p and if it is a, a nucleotide structure you can go for blast n in blast p mostly we'll be using the blast p since it will uh, check for the protein uh, structure which is already available existing structure in the uh, csp data bank Say for example, so once you have uh, taken your query sequence and you'll be searching your uh, sequence based on the BLAST result and you'll be getting your uh, results. I mean, uh, the list of structures will be available. So based on the identity and your accession, accession code and also the sequence length and alignment mode and also the bit score E value. So based on E value, it will segregate the structures and also the resolution and uh, whether it is positive or not. Uh, I mean, positive energy or those things will be available. And also, SEOP, then the ligand as well as the organism, which specific organism. Say, for example, I'm using a rat sequence and it will check whether uh, sequence similarity that is based on the evolutionary studies, it will check for the organism and it will give you the list of proteins uh, available, list of structural proteins are available. So, you can look at here, you can see the identity is 44%. Uh, if it is like uh, in case if you're taking human and rat, you will be getting more than 90 or 98 uh, percentage identity. Okay, so like that, uh, this organism it shows 44 percent identity, and based on this, I can choose this first model since the E value and bit score is uh, quite uh, good compared to other models. So what happens is I'll be selecting my template and how I can select my template. So how I will be accessing my template. So based on the secondary structural analysis, I have my uh, query sequence. I had got my template sequence and how can I find uh, whether my template and query is completely matched with each other. So based on the secondary structure prediction analysis and once you, once you, uh, I mean, once you got the query sequence as well as your template sequence what happens is you can be merged both the sequence uh, structures and you will be checking out whether it is like uh, whether the sequence is matched with your template protein or not and also it will align and access the similarity for multiple templates not only a uh, single uh, uh, structure it will align with multiple uh, structures also i'm just giving an overview of uh, theory sequence and one template structure but if you are using multiple templates you want to check uh, uh, with your good uh, uh, resolution image so what you will do is like you will be taking your multiple structure and that is also possible and once you have done your uh, assessment 
then you will be aligning your target sequence with your template so how will you align your uh, target sequence with the template it is completely based on this evolutionary pattern as well as the conservation image or uh, conservation residues so say for example these are the residues i mean a protein amino acid residues and uh, the numbering is rep numbering represents the protein uh, amino acid uh, number and it will check for both the things like your target sequence as well as your template sequence so once you got it, what happens is it will check whether uh, the happen structure is similar or the secondary structure tertiary structures are similar and this things will be predicted with the alignment of target sequence to template sequence so once you have aligned your uh, i mean once you are aligned and validate your structure then you will go for building your homology model structure so how will you model your uh, structure so either it is based on the modeler uh, i mean modeler is the first developed algorithm for homology modeling so i mean biovia discovery studio uses so modeler algorithm to build the uh, homology model the protein so the i mean once you have got your homology model based on the template then you can go for model analysis and uh, uh, model analysis and based on the validation you can predict how it is determined yeah so megul uh, the question is for poll too sure thank you thank you arti so i will be launching the next poll uh, i request everyone to uh, just uh, select the right response the question is do you think biovia can help you solve problems coming into uh, your product development process so if you feel uh, it is uh, yes you can uh, select accordingly if you feel it's no you can click no so we will keep the poll open for a few seconds uh, 20 seconds maybe so that everyone can select the right response okay i see some people have voted uh, some are still voting we'll just keep it live for a few more seconds and then we'll continue with the presentation okay uh so i think we can continue thank you Ati. thank you Mary. yeah so after uh, your template selection after you building your homology model protein so what happens and how will you uh, get your structure is correct or not so before you go for validation you'll be selecting your model so how will you validate your model how will you do the analysis before you uh, uh, before you go for your validation step say for example you build uh, around five models so based on the five models you will be checking for dope score as well as the pdf energy so PB pdf energy is nothing but probability uh, distribution function as well as the dope score is nothing but dope energy score and based on this course we will be validating with uh, uh, certain structures say for example you will be having five models so either you can uh, it depends upon uh, how many models that you are selecting so specifically if, uh, if i am selecting only five models it will uh, show based on the pdf as well as dope energies and also it will analyze the model so once you analyze the model then it will be analyzing with the templates which you have already uh, done so this is your template as well as your model protein and it will go for analysis and then only we will be checking with model refinement so coming to the sixth step involved in uh, uh, modeling and is like model refinement how will you refine your model whether it is a, a good model or not say for example um, you had done your uh, uh, analysis with pdf energies as well as dope score so i want to check whether if in case if there is any issues with the loop or if in case if there is any issues with the side chain refinement so what happens is you will be refining your loop based on the residues and you will be refining your side chains in case if there is any problem problem in the side chain or loop refinement then you can go ahead and you can uh, uh, refine your uh, structures based on the loops and loop modeling is uh, uh, i mean uh, it's one of the uh, thing which is 
there in the homology modeling and if if there is any problem with the loop refinement then you can go for loop refinement also and apart from that side chain modeling is also possible and also once it is done then we'll be going for constraint minimization and dynamics so how will you go for constraint minimization and dynamics so this steps will in, involve uh, i mean energy minimization using uh, i mean in, in case of uh, this uh, biovia discovery studio will be going with the nam software or uh, i mean based on the a certain algorithm then we'll go for it and apart from that uh, the uh, coming to the summary of the homology modeling what happens is you will be selecting your sequence based on the homologous protein and you will be accessing your template so once you access your template you will be aligning your target sequence to the template and once you aligned your target sequence with the template then you will go for homology model building and once it is done then you will go for model analysis and selection and after a model analysis and selection then you will go for refinement so after the refinement uh, it is completely based on your uh, uh, research work or uh, uh, the work that you are going to carry out in case i have predicted my structure and i need to uh, study in depth about my protein structure uh, to check about the stability of your protein and i want to check uh, implement some mutation and i want to go for the mutation analysis it is completely possible with that and uh, coming to the summary of your uh, protein structure determination to be as successful as possible it is important to examine the results at uh, each of each stage of the homology modeling the reason why we had carried out uh, this many steps in case if there is we are predicting it computationally so we should get the proper uh, uh, homology model structure that is the reason we are going for series of steps so if you uh, go and look at other servers like will be predict we will give giving the structures and we doesn't know how it works right so for that only we'll be going for series of steps and uh, each each steps involves certain criteria and uh, uh, and also you can validate your structure uh, against your experimental structure that is already available or the supplementary information whether it is available in your uh, data banks or any other and also the steps have been presented in a linear fashion at any stage in the model building process it may be necessary to look back to any of the prior step to improve the model and for example once you are analyzing your protein uh, homology model the protein structure then you will go for profiles 3d and profiles 3d and verify 3d is also available inside and it will uh, check the validation part to uh, check whether the sequence alignment as well as the homology model the protein is correct or not and also the model built with this method should be considered as working hypothesis if you have uh, i mean uh, there are certain proof that does well and the model is completely good when compared to other uh, things and what is next the models can be used either to perform mutagenetic studies or for protein protein docking either if you are looking for a uh, this is completely based on your research work that you are going through and also uh, you can uh, set the target for structure based design of ligand so if you would like to check your uh, you have uh, synthesized any compound or you or, uh, you want to check with your uh, ligand or drug molecules and how it has been interacted with your protein structure then you can take your homology modeling and you can go for molecular docking that is your protein ligand docking and also you can go for as a i mean uh, either it can be structure based design of ligands or the target uh, designs of ligand docking so uh, megul is going sure. to yeah thank you thank you arti i'll launch the poll uh, so the last poll for this session uh, do you want to know more from our technical expert on how biovia can help you in your area of work so if you want to know more you can select the option yes if you want to uh, uh, select no you could do that so we'll just keep the poll live for a few seconds after which we'll continue with the presentation I'll just repeat the question. It's uh, do you want to know more from our technical team on how Biovia can help you in your area of work? Okay. So we will keep it live for a few more seconds before we proceed with the presentation. Okay. I think we are good to go. Uh, Arti, over to you. Thank you, Megan. So. Uh, with this, I am ending the presentation. 
so before i uh, i mean uh, i just give an introduction about biovia so we have a rich scientific portfolio and we have unified lab management which it contains all the uh, lab related software and apart from that for process production also we do have uh, eln lens etc and we do have uh, softwares for quality and regulatory management and apart from that for collaborative science we have predictive models as well as novel therapeutics and engineering uh, materials and chemical form relations etc so uh, i mean uh, coming to this like uh, uh, for collaborative science we'll have uh, biovia discovery studio discovery studio can help for protein structure modeling as well as uh, uh, and not only the protein structure modeling you can do all the computational work and material studio in case if you are working with polymers or nanotubes or nano materials then you can go for a material studio this can help in uh, building even a qsr is possible with material studio and apart from that pipeline fire pilot uh, this is completely for genomics uh, in case if you would like to work with the ngs pipelines the already existing pipelines are available if you want to create your own pipeline then you will have biovia pipeline pilot uh, solution and apart from that we do have biovia registration draw direct etc and in case of unified lab management we do have blims and uh, eln electronic laboratory notebooks and this current can help in uh, uh, process production operation and also for uh, regulatory uh, after your uh, uh, i mean uh, drugs or i mean the uh, things are approved then you will go for quality regulatory management for quality regulatory management we do have biovia qms and edms eqms etc so we are uh, helping the research team from development manufacturing until the quality management etc so with this uh, uh, i'm just ending the topic sure thank you thank you arti thank you for the wonderful uh, presentation uh, we will take questions now so i see uh, one question uh, in the uh, chat box so before we start the question just wanted to inform everyone in case if you have any questions feel free to type them in the chat box so uh, we have the first question arti uh, which is after homology modeling protein how to find out the active site and size of active site cavity area okay so there are uh, uh, servers are available so if you give your protein structure then uh, say for example caspp is available so you if you give your protein structure then it will find out the active as well as the binding site of your protein structure okay uh thank you for the answer arti i hope uh, bala uh, is the one who asked this question i hope bala this answers uh, your question in case if you have any uh, other question you can either raise your hand and i can unmute you and you can talk or if you want to type it out that is also okay i hope this answers your question okay uh i'm just checking if we have any yes we have one more question arti uh, which is is it possible to upload the homology modeling protein in pdb bank no right now uh, the option is uh, not available so the reason why i have mentioned about rcsb uh, steps involved in uh, uh, i mean the steps involved in rcsb pdb data bank there are certain uh, questions we uh, i mean we got it uh, I mean, I have determined my structure, and I want to uh, deposit my structure. So, for experimentation method, you can deposit your structure in RCSB, but uh, for homology modeling, it is not possible to deposit in RCSB PDB data. Okay, sure. So, this was also a question from uh, Bala. I hope it is answered. Uh, Bala, I have unmuted you. Maybe you can. Uh... Uh, unmute yourself and in case if you have any more questions you can uh, ask those hi hi ma'am this is bala yes bala we can hear you please go ahead yeah yeah i have two doubt only i asked ma'am explained clearly uh, my doubt is clear. thank you so much for Arthi, thank you, thank you, thank you, Balu. So we have one more question, Arthi, which is from Sonu. Uh, question is: Can you please elaborate a little more about dynamic studies after homology modeling? 
how much nanosecond and why we have to do md okay okay so uh, this is a good question so no uh, i mean um, so why do we need to go for molecular dynamic simulation i have predicted my homology model structure i want to check my structure how it does like uh, in the atomic le level how we can how the stability has been lost and how the structure is there okay so say for example in homology model and all we will be predicting the structure but in case of molecular dynamic simulation it will be checking your structure in atomic level in nanosecond so the nanosecond which you are uh, talking about it is completely based on the rmsd and the rmsf level which is attaining so based on say for example you have your graph uh, of rmsd so in phi n is also it can attain your stability and if it is not stable in the phi nanosecond then we have to keep it for another uh, phi uh, like that we will be setting your nanosecond we will be checking how the protein has been uh, i mean uh, how the deviation is there in the phi nanoseconds 10 nanoseconds and up to 100 nanoseconds it is completely based on your work and mostly right now nowadays we will be looking only in the 100 nanoseconds level it is not like that so it is completely based on your uh, structure how the stability has been attained hope uh, it's clarified or you can unmute yourself and ask yes i hope that answers the question so no if you have any more question you can unmute yourself and uh, you can ask the question okay i think uh, we have uh, answered more of the question i'll just check if we uh, have any more no i don't think we have more questions arti so thank you thank you for answering all the uh, questions and thank you for a wonderful presentation just to inform all